If you recently had the opportunity to check the list of the world's most expensive mega projects, you might have been surprised to see the so called Gulf Railway holding second or third place, depending on the source. The estimated budget needed for this project is an astounding quarter trillion dollars, even more than the anticipated replacement of the International Space Station. By the way, it's great to see another railway project, or better said, a bunch of railway projects on top of this list, in the shape of EU's 10T core railway network. But we'll keep that story for another video. In any case, the Railways Explained team decided to take a look and explore all the important aspects of the Gulf Railway project, also known as the GCC Railway. As we usually do in these kinds of videos, we will cover the rationale, financing, obstacles in realization, current developments, and some future projections for this indeed Giga project. But before we proceed, in case you enjoy railway topics such as this one, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and support our production by considering becoming our patron. Join button and one-time donations are also very appreciated, as that's the only way we can stay independent and keep this channel running. The Gulf Railway project is proposed railway system to connect all Gulf Cooperation Council states, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. This immense network in harshest desert conditions, when fully completed, will have a total length of 2,117 kilometers, estimated cost of $250 billion, and scheduled completion in 2030. Just to make ourselves familiar with the rail companies in the region, we have the Saudi Railway Company in charge of the network in Saudi Arabia, Etihad Rail in the Arab Emirates, Oman Rail in Oman, and Qatar Rail in Qatar. Kuwait, Oman and Bahrain at the moment do not have railway lines under operation, although the light rail metro system in the length of 109 km in Manama, the capital of Bahrain, is being prepared. The Gulf Railway project is based on an economic feasibility study from 2003, but despite the potential, which is further integration of the region, commercial benefits and broader geopolitical objectives, various political and economic challenges have hindered the official startup until 2009. It's worth noting that, besides the finances, one of the main problems was the different vision and needs of each GCC country. Namely, Qatar favored high-speed passenger rail, mainly driven by then-upcoming 2022 FIFA World Cup organization. Oman shared similar vision only with the idea of linking the GCC railway beyond Muscat to the special economic zone of Dukyum, Salala and beyond, all with the aim to develop tourism. Saudi Arabia had the objective of transporting bulk minerals and passengers using diesel power. United Arab Emirates was focused on transport of containerized goods with also diesel trains. You get the idea. The official approval of the project was in 2009, with statements from the GCC summit held in Bahrain that year. The stated goal of the project was the facilitation of commerce, citizens' movement and support for the joint enterprises, all in line with the bloc's trade integration strategy. The deadline was set for 2018. This completion date was of course missed, largely because of the oil price slump, from 2014 to 2016, which intensified fiscal strains across the GCC's oil export dependent economies. This was compounded by the emergence of deep political rifts within the bloc, which erupted in 2017 when the boycott of Qatar by the Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Egypt began. From 2017 to 2021, even a blockade was imposed by Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and other Muslim countries on the host country of the 2022 World Cup. However, the project was revived in December 2021 during the 42nd GCC summit. In 2023, for the first time in years, the GCC took serious steps to speed up the project. In October that year, GCC transport ministers set up administrative, legal and financial rules governing the GCC Railway Authority, 
which was established back in 2021. The authority's tasks primarily involve receiving and coordinating work plans, aligning schedules, ensuring the project adheres to unified technical specifications and standards, and guaranteeing the network's completion within the agreed deadline. At the same time, the completion deadline is set for December 2030 and the project's general agreement was ratified, outlining member states' obligations and responsibilities. In April 2024, Hafid Rail, a company set up specifically to handle the 303-kilometer section between Sohar in Oman and Abu Dhabi in United Arab Emirates, announced it entered the implementation phase of this $3 billion project. It has secured binding contracts through a United Arab Emirates-Omani alliance involving companies from both nations, marking the realization of linking the GCC countries with railway network. Previously, United Arab Emirates has finalized its route towards the Saudi border as part of the National Railway Network, thus linking all seven emirates from the Saudi border to Fujaira port in the east. In November 2024, Kuwait's Central Agency for Public Tenders opened four financial bids for the design services of a 111-kilometer railway line connecting Kuwait City with the Saudi Arabian border. The Turkish company Proyapi submitted the lowest bid at $8.2 million, while the bids from China State Railway, Senir from Spain, and the Turkish branch of Sistra all exceeded $20 million. The evaluation of the bids is currently underway. The design and consultancy contract are expected to be finalized within a year, after which tenders for the construction phase will be issued. This is regarded as the first phase of this project. The second phase will involve presenting the project to potential investors and selecting an investment partner. The third and final phase will focus on work's execution, which is anticipated to take approximately 30 months. All in all, as it was officially announced in mid-2023, GCC governments are preparing to hand out $167 billion worth of contracts to link the six member countries in the horizon of two to three years. Qatar already has some modern railway lines, but to complete its involvement in the Gulf Railway project, it needs to connect its network to Dammam in Saudi Arabia via the Salwa port, for which it was claimed the designs have been already finished. Bahrain's part involves linking its future network and planned light rail system in the capital with Qatar and Saudi Arabia via sea bridges. Bahrain and Qatar agreed already in November 2023 to revive the Friendship Bridge project, while the already existing King Fahd Causeway, linking Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, shall be upgraded to support railway tracks. Lastly, Kuwait must connect its new IC port with Saudi Arabia's al kafji region, for which feasibility study have been completed by the Sistra from France in July this year. The cooperation on this project from the beginning is envisioned in such a way that each of the GCC members should construct a part of the network located within its territory and bear the costs based on the same principle. The exception is the bridge linking Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, which will be a joint venture of both countries. Also, each will have the authority to decide whether private or government entities will build, operate and invest on their own part. On the screen, you can see tables showing the route length, type of the line and the name of the major stations in each country. According to available maps, the railway network will begin in Kuwait and extend to Dammam on Saudi Arabia's eastern coast. From there, the network will split into two directions, one towards Bahrain and then Qatar via two sea bridges, and the other towards the southern Saudi coast, following the eastern shores of the kingdom. The two routes are planned to converge at Salwa port on the border between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. From there, the network continues southward along the United Arab Emirates coast, reaching Abu Dhabi, then extending southward into the desert towards Al Ain on the United Arab Emirates Oman border, and further on to Sohar and Muscat on the Gulf of Oman's shores.
It will link major urban centers in the region, including Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait City. The entire route will span 2,117 kilometers, facilitating the transportation of goods and passengers from Kuwait in the north to Muscat in the south. According to the GCC's plan, passenger trains will travel at speeds up to 220 km per hour, while freight trains will operate at speeds ranging from 80 to 120 km per hour. Once the network is operational, the GCC Railway Authority will coordinate passenger and freight transportation schedules. Local authorities will retain responsibility for maintaining and overseeing operations and receiving transit fees from network users. But the deal does not restrict any country from outsourcing this sector through public-private partnership or even full privatization. It's interesting to mention that back in 2017, the EU announced its involvement in this project via the planned signing of the Memorandum of Understanding to support railway system development by providing regulatory provisions for the construction and operation of GCC network. The Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, the Secretariat General, the Association of the European Rail Industry, the European Union Agency for Railway and the International Union of Railways have then bilaterally signed Memorandum of Understandings in the presence of representatives of the European Commission in December 2017 in UIC's offices in Paris. This cooperation is crucial because of the relative lack of experience with railways in the region, potential deployment of the ERTMS, and avoiding interoperability issues. As for the future of the project, it remains vulnerable to multiple risks in the following years, including a deteriorating fiscal outlook for GCC states as oil prices decline, the scope for a rise in regional political tensions and the logistical challenges presented by cross-border rail construction in the Gulf. Now, political tensions within the Gulf continue to recede, creating a more supportive environment for the project. An improving relation between the Gulf and Iran, which has been catalyzed by the restoration of ties between Iran and Saudi Arabia in mid-2023, and a recent calming of the conflict in Yemen, have calmed previous concerns of the potential for attacks on infrastructure in the Gulf. These improvements could be derailed, but this should not happen short term. Regarding the deadlines, the official ones are shown on the graph, but we are afraid that some delays are inevitable. Of course, we must mention that several other railway construction projects happened recently in the region, most notable of which is the inauguration of a high-speed rail between Mecca and Medina in 2018, which we already covered in detail on Railways Explained. Our conclusion for this story is that the Gulf Railway project is today much more realistic than it was before, that the current economic stability in the region enables investments of these kinds, and that in the past year the project got some steam. We hope it will see its full completion of not by 2030, maybe by mid-2030s. We would also not overlook the wider context of the project, which is, for instance, Iraq's intention to become a corridor for transporting goods and energy resources from Kuwait in the south to Turkey in the north, continuing to Europe. It launched the Development Road project in July 2023 with this aim. Thus, the Gulf Railway project is set to become an integral component of a trade route extending all the way to the borders of the European Union via Iraq, which clarifies the keen interest of all GCC states in supporting the Iraqi project. Also, India's Middle East Europe Economic Corridor Initiative announced at a G20 summit in New Delhi during 2023 is likely to boost rail development in the region. Again, the final goal is the EU market. In addition to these corridor initiatives, the GCC railway project might also achieve significant goals related to collective security in the Gulf. Namely, it will establish a sustainable trade corridor linking GCC markets directly to Muscat and, in a later stage, the Omani ports of Dukwum and Salala without needing to pass through, sometimes problematic, 
Strait of Hormuz. For the very end, let's explain the catch with the 250 billion figures. From what we managed to find, the estimation is actually in the range from 100 to 250 billion dollars, but this is not related to the core Gulf Railway only. Namely, this estimation includes the development of national rail networks in each of the GCC countries, which will connect with and make one hole with the Gulf Railway, but also there are several smaller access lines to the ports and even metro systems, such as the one in Riyadh. Also, keep in mind we are speaking about the construction in a desert, but not only in a desert, as there are heavy mountainous regions such as those in the United Arab Emirates and Oman, with height of more than 3 kilometers. So, yes, the figure of 250 billion really makes sense. This was the story of the Gulf Railway project on Railways Explained. We really hope you enjoyed it, if yes, click that thumbs up and give us your thoughts in the comment section. See you soon in the next video. Until then, goodbye.